Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Rossi Circuit Judge in 44 Magnum. Now this rifle has generated a fair bit of interest here in Australia. The reason being is when they came into the country about a year ago, they were in their 45 Long Colt 410 uh, configurations. Now for me personally, I mean, I, that really didn't do a lot for me. I wasn't excited about any of those calibers, only because they're not favourites of mine. Now, if they're favourites of yours, well, you know, all well and good. I, I don't have anything against the calibers. It's just that I wanted something a little bit more solid. So when um, they announced that they were actually making this rifle in a 44 Magnum, I just knew straight away that that was the rifle for me. So this is it here. Let me have a bit of a talk about what comes with the firearm, and uh, then I'll jump into a little bit more detail about it. So first of all, it comes with an owner's manual or a safety manual here. As I always recommend in other firearm reviews, read up on the manual, just spend five minutes to have a quick look through it because there's always something in there, no matter how experienced you are with firearms, that um, you just don't know about. There's always something that um, is worth reading up on. So I highly recommend doing that. You've also got a uh, brush, a pull-through cleaning brush here, which is real handy. And there's a couple of interesting pieces here. This piece here is just an extended hammer piece, so when you actually um, cock the firearm if, in, if you're going to be using in single action you can actually have a wider grip there on your thumb to, to do so. Personally I left that off because I find the hammer fine the way it is. You've also got a security key here this basically um, you can insert to the back of the hammer and you can um, lock the rifle so that it can't be operated. I'll show that uh, to all of you in a little bit more detail just a little bit later in the review. So let me go into a few specs now the rifle overall is only uh, just a tad under 90 centimetres in length, so I'll just run it by the camera there, and then you can see, like, it, it's a fairly short firearm. Obviously, it's a legal length for a rifle here in Australia and all states and territories. So, um, overall, though, it's just a very uh, short rifle when you compare it to others out there. The barrel's only 18 and a half inches um, long, so there's a nice blue finish on that. The whole rifle is finished in blue obviously it's all metal so that's really nice quality and you've got a walnut stock here um, as well so overall it's 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 an unusual looking rifle uh, some people are, you know may or may not like it and having a rifle that's basically a revolver with extended barrel and then also an extended um, stock may look a bit strange to a few people but many many years ago um, you know these were getting around uh, along with lever action rifles so um, you know they were the norm. When you actually have a look at the uh, barrel and the sights on it, um, it is a uh, high vis sight so I'll just bring that up to the camera for you. You can see there at the uh, rear they're actually like fluoro green and then at the front it's just a fluoro red blade. Now the reason why I like this rifle um, over the 45 uh, Long Colt and 410 configuration is you've got an extra shot with this one. It's a six shot uh, 44 Magnum. So you can see there, bring up the uh, camera, there's a six shot cylinder there. So that's really, really handy. Obviously, as you can see, it's unloaded. So I'll just close the cylinder up. You can see on both sides here, you've got um, blast shields in front of the uh, cylinder. So that's really, really handy and it uh, gives you quite a bit of protection. Now the uh, rifle can be uh, just just the same as what it is with a revolver. It can be operated in either double action or single action. So those of you who don't know what that is, obviously double action is when you just pull the trigger, like so. Single action is when you actually cock it, pull the hammer back, and then fire it from there, okay? So that's the differences there. So it can actually be operated in both modes. Top here, you've got a um, scope rail there. For me, I'm not using that because I actually don't have an optic to um, to put on this rifle. I like the open sights on it. I suppose to a degree, I'm a bit of a traditionalist in that way. I, I don't mind open sights, especially on a rifle that where really most of my shots aren't really going to exceed probably 50 yards, 100 yards absolute maximum. So that's the reason why I'm not putting a scope on this rifle. On the uh, back of the uh, stock here, you've got a fairly generous kick pad as well. You've also got sling attachments at the rear and at the front of the rifle. One thing I'll talk about now before I take the rifle out is I've only recently got this rifle back from a gunsmith down in Brisbane. 
Now the reason why I put it into a gunsmith was for a trigger adjustment. When you first get this rifle, the trigger is ridiculously heavy. Uh, I'm talking uh, well in excess of 10 pound trigger. So uh, most of you will know that is that is very, very heavy. So what I did was I got it professionally adjusted. And why I didn't do it myself is because obviously when you're talking about a revolver, whether it be uh, you know a, a handgun revolver or an actual uh, rifle configuration, is if you go adjusting the trigger too light uh, for the double action. So in other words, obviously when you pull the trigger just like so without cocking the hammer, if you've got that really, really light, what you'll find is when you actually go to cock it in single action, the hammer won't stay back. It'll just go straight forward again. So really that's a bit of a safety risk that. So for me, I wanted like just, I suppose, a happy compromise. I just wanted it precisely adjusted so that obviously it's light in uh, double action, yet single action, I can still use it without any problems and that hammer just going forward. So that was the result here. The trigger now um, for me is uh, roughly about seven and a half pounds. So it's dropped it quite considerably from uh, over 10 pounds. Yet as I say, I can still use that single action if I need to. So that's what I did to the rifle before I even shot it, because obviously uh, with just dry firing it, um, I could see straight away I wasn't happy with that uh, trigger being so heavy. And the reason being is because when I had it up to my eye, I found when I was pulling the trigger on it, because it was so heavy, I was just pulling the shot all the time. It, it, it made accuracy um, very, very difficult, just even in like practicing with dry firing. So that's the reason why I got that uh, fixed up straight away. Let me just have a uh, quick talk about the um, security system on this uh, rifle. As I mentioned earlier, there's a key that fits into the back of the hammer there. So all you need to do is just put that in, okay, and then you just turn it clockwise. And what it'll do is it'll prevent you from firing it. You'll see the hammer will come back just a smidge, but it's not enough. You, you can't, the firing pin won't protrude whatsoever. It's uh, just a complete security system. You can load the cylinder, but that doesn't mean a thing if you can't actually fire it. So you know, it will turn once and that's it. It just will not move. So the only way to unlock that is using the key there. And you've just got to turn it anti-clockwise out again. And then obviously you can operate in both single action, double action. Okay, so I'll get out on the farm now and I'll show you what this rifle is actually capable of. Uh, just keep in mind guys, I'm not going to be using this off a bench because that's not what the rifle was designed for. So I don't have an optic for it, so that's another reason why I won't be shooting it off a bench or in that configuration. However, I will do a series of different accuracy tests there, so you can get the general idea of uh, how this rifle performs. So let's get out and uh, get into it. I'm really looking forward to doing this review. So what I've done is I've set up a little plinking area about 25 yards from me here. So if you take a look, I've set up several cans. There's also a watermelon there, a 10 litre jug of water, and I've also put out the LaRue Tactical Auto Resetting Target. So what I'll do is I'll just have a bit of a plink and you can just see the uh, general accuracy there of this uh, rifle. So I'll just start off on a couple of cans and see how I go there. I should have the sights just about right for the 25 yards. No, a little bit high on the sights, bring them down a little. That's better. Right on. Let's hit that auto resetting target. It certainly goes down with a thud with the 44 Magnum. Okay, I'll just get a couple more cans. So as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of power on the 44 Magnum. Especially when you have it in a rifle configuration, obviously with a longer barrel, it's picking up more velocity, which in turn is giving you greater energy at the other end. You can see there with that LaRue targets uh, reset, I mean just have a look at the damage right in the middle there, it's just smacked that plate fair dead centre. So I'll put a few more rounds in. Alright so I've got another six in it, um, let's have a bit more of a plink. I'll start off with that LaRue target, 
and uh, hit that one and then we'll move on to a few of the others. Certainly goes down hard. Okay, up it comes again. This is why this target's just so much fun. Okay, let's try that jug of water. We'll go for the watermelon now up on the um, top. <laughs> That's just gone into an absolute million bits, that. Eh? See if I can hit those cans again. So I'll demonstrate now, just rapid fire, six shots, and you can see just how quick you can get the shots off through this rifle. Okay, I've got some of these uh, new Hornady Levolution rounds. Now they're the 44 Magnum and they've got the uh, FTX tip, 225 grain. So have a look at these and I mean, they sort of look like uh, basically a V-Max, but for a 44 Magnum. So I'll load up a few of these, and then behind me there, I've got uh, three watermelons, and I'll just have a bit of fun with them and see how we go. Oh. As you can see, they're very, very effective. This rifle is just a whole heap of fun. Okay, so I've got the American Eagle here. Now, as most of you know, American Eagle is more of a training round because it is quite a budget round. So I'm just gonna load up six of these 240 grain jacketed hollow points. This is gonna be a real test, this one. I've got the LaRue tactical target out there at 100 yards. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Rossi Circuit Judge in 44 Magnum. I absolutely love this little rifle. It's just so much fun to use. I'm certainly going to have to either get into reloading for the 44 or go out and buy a whole heap of factory ammo because I'm certainly going through a lot of it. It's just that much fun. Now, a couple of negatives about the rifle, um, but obviously that can be fixed. First of all is the trigger. When you first get the rifle, the trigger is extremely heavy. So if you want to do what I did, obviously get the trigger light and take it to a professional gunsmith and then you can get that done. The other thing is too, is the cheek piece at the back is quite high. So when you're using for some fairly heavy loads, some stout loads out of the 44, sometimes because obviously the rifle is so light, when you put it up to your cheek, pull the trigger, gives you a bit of a sting on the cheek there. Um, for me, I don't mind that that much, but for those of you out there who are fairly recoil conscious, may find that a problem. So you might want to put something soft or uh, something there around there just to uh, soften the blow or the recoil of it. But they're the only two negatives I have about it. On the side of the positives, it's lightweight, it's easy to carry in a hunting situation if you're hiking with it or, or walking around on a, on a large property. Um, obviously, it's not going to weigh you down. It's got a nice, generous uh, um, kick pad at the back here, and also it's six shots. So you've got six shots, you can get them off very fast. So if you come across like small packs of dogs or a small pack of uh, pigs, feral pigs, then obviously you can get the shots off quick and you can take out a couple of them. 
So really, really handy, obviously, for that in hunting situations. Also, the accuracy too. I really like the accuracy of this rifle. I must admit, I was a, a bit skeptical when I first got it. I didn't think that it would be that great with accuracy. But as you've seen here from this review under different scenarios, it certainly performs. And at $865, I think that it's a really well-priced firearm. So if you are interested in one, why not go in, check one out. If, especially if it's a, a legal in your state, why not get one? Okay, well, I'll finish up the review, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. As always, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time.